uh, hello everyone. Um, uh, can I just say this is uh, clearly the most well organised and busiest PHP meetup I've seen. Uh, you are definitely giving run London a massive run for its money. Um, uh, it's absolutely amazing to see how uh, how how good a job you're you're doing. So yeah, it's uh, it's a real delight. Um, so yes, thank you for coming. I'm Jim Scond. Uh, a little bit about me first. Um, just to start us off, I run the Birmingham PHP user group, which uh, does not attract audiences like this, um, but it's still awesome. Um, uh, I also run uh, co-run Fusion, which is a quarterly uh, mini conference in the uh, in the in the evenings. It's like a sort of we put like three or four international speakers on if we can, um, and we put on really amazing food. If you don't know about the Birmingham food scene, it's very very trendy, and I'm going to say how amazing my city is. Um, I work for Eastside as a developer advocate in Shopify. Um, Eastside lets me do this so that you, uh, if you're interested in Shopify and the reason why there's a developer advocate in a Shopify agency, because we are an agency, come and speak to me because <clears throat> that's why they let me do what I do. Uh, we have built crazy amounts of tooling and stuff like that that we're, uh, that we're actually rolling, we're starting to look at rolling out uh, and maintaining open source libraries and stuff. Right, that's my, uh, that's my about me spiel. Uh, there's my Twitter handle and my, uh, and my, and my LinkedIn. So, my back, my, a background of how we, how we start. Um, tool shaming and tech elitism is such a massive subject that we know how to, uh, how to start this out. So, in the, in the beginning, uh, the computer, the computer is an adjective and it's an adjective to describe a person. It's not a noun. It's not a machine that does something. It's someone that does computations. That's people, the people of the computers. So it was really interesting to find out when researching this talk as a sort of start of my background was all of the pioneers in computing are all women. I mean, you, know, you can't say 100%, but they, they pretty much are. Um, <laughs> any in tonight? <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a really weird thing to say. Uh, the resolution's not so great on the thing here, but uh, probably quite a few of you might recognise the only one that's not a photo on the far left. Anyone? Ada, Ada Lovelace, the godmother of computing and programming. Um, and then we've got Grace Hopper, who works for the United, uh, the United States Navy, and she developed COBOL. Um, that's Sister Mary Kelly, who was the first ever woman who got a PhD in computer science. This is a very, very famous picture of um, Margaret Hamilton uh, with the stack of uh, printed out code um, that was put on Apollo 11, which sent mankind to the moon. And uh, slightly less known here is Kathleen Booth. Um, and Kathleen Booth invented the first compiled, uh, compiled language. No, no, that's not right, assembly language. So this, this from, it, from, from here onwards, this takes us to about, especially with, especially with, with, with NASA, uh, with NASA and, and you know, before it sort of Bletchley Park of sort of, of teams of women, um, and especially in NASA there was teams of women doing programming, because programming was large amounts of computations, and it was mathematical, and it was, and it was boring. It wasn't seen as, it wasn't seen as something that was, that was, that was progressive, that was, you know, that was highly scientific. That's why it sort of fell into, it fell into a woman's role. So, so th things like this fell into um, reception, reception and typewriter work. This is effectively data entry in large amounts. But in this, in this case, these pioneers are doing, are doing the actual computations themselves. So what are the men doing if all the women are pioneering? The men are all working in, pi uh, they're all pioneering in hardware because it falls into gender stereotypes. So the men are, they're, they're building things because that's, you know, that's how society, you know, we're talking up to about 1965 around here. They're, they're, they're doing man things. They're building, building, you know, they, yes, building computers and things like that. From, from around 1965 onwards, everything, every, no, late 60s, everything changes. And it changes because software and hardware start becoming synonymous with one another. So when you have things like home computer kits, uh, and that becomes a thing when you have, once you get from kits to actually buying computers, your computer at, your, at home starts defining you by what software is running on it. So the role suddenly changes. So from about 1970, from about 75% of the workforce in programming completely, 
women disappear in about a year and a half. It's not the purpose of this talk to explain why, because I don't know. Uh, there are lots of academic papers and things like that, and there is a quite an interesting book that a lot of people have been talking about. Uh, I think it's called Where Did Little Women Go? It's a bit of a sort of a, fen a bit of a phenomenon. So now, like, this is taken out. The pioneers are taken out, and now computers and programming are a man's job. And then it starts defining you. That's when things really, really start changing. So from, 90, from the mid-70s, like I said, that mentioned the, the computer kits at home, what you buy and what you, what you operate and what you know how to program in and what operating system you use, instead of doing what these pioneers are doing, which is solving problems, it now defines who you are. That's where it becomes, that, that's where so, software and hardware start merging together and now I use this, so therefore I'm like this. Oh, you use that and therefore you're like that. So now we start getting silos. It's like a silo, effect, a silo effect. And once we get into the 80s and it comes into big business and it comes into things like, you know, stock exchanges and blah, 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 blah. Now we really are, we're, now we're completely siloed. So by the 90s, what operating system, what programming language you use defines who you are. Uh, everyone talks about jokes about having a Dilbert for each talk. I got one. I found out that Scott Adams is actually really horrible recently, so I'm a bit, I actually might get rid of this one. But this sums up where we get to now, like from our background from the 60s, and now we're at the sort of, you know, the 90s and 2000s, and past, uh, you know, we're, we're into, the, into the era of sort of web development, which is why, which is why we're all here. So that's, that's just a generic sort of background to everything. This is a story about me, though. Um, ha, that sounds really arrogant. Um, I'm not a programmer at all by trade. I'm an actor uh, trained in theatre studies and English literature. So a natural choice to be a computer programmer, obviously. And so anyone, has, uh, hands up if anyone's heard of imposter syndrome. Almost everyone. If you don't know, it's that feeling you get when you sit down and your boss goes, you need to debug this. You've got about three hours. Um, it's in Ruby on Rails. Have you ever dealt with Ruby on Rails before? No. Okay, well, you still got to do it because the client needs it. And then you think, oh dear, what am I doing? <laughs> um, so imagine that. If you've got a computer science degree, you're a little bit alarmed. I'm an actor, so uh, I find this very, very hard. So my imposter syndrome going into this industry is already a bit of a disaster. I wanted to be a developer though, I wanted to be a web developer though. And the whole point of all this is that you have a bar when you're doing web development in our day and age now, there's a low barrier to entry, you could just do it. So I had to learn something, I thought okay, well I want to be a programmer, so I need to, I, I need to learn a programming language, what do I do? I'll just sort of, I don't know, choose what everyone else programs in. So not surprisingly, you know, I chose this, um, <laughs> which probably, well, when you say it's JavaScript, but you have to do that, it doesn't make sense uh, in a PHP user group. I chose this, I chose this because Everyone was using it, and then you hear Wikipedia, and you hear, you know, and you hear like Facebook, and wow, oh, okay, I'll just, I'll just do whatever, what everyone else is doing. When I chose this in about 2011, I don't, I didn't know what baggage came with this programming language. I didn't know what external people's thoughts are on this programming language. I don't need to go through all of them. You'll be aware of them, and you probably would have witnessed it firsthand. But I chose that. Okay, so I start learning the syntax. The syntax is. Syntax is fine, okay, right, and this does this, okay, so I go, and I'm, my company send me on a training session, okay, right, I think I understand that now, object-oriented programming comes in, and I'm like, okay, well, this is a bit alarming, okay, but then it all stops, and someone goes, you do not, nobody programs in PHP just raw like that anymore. You need a framework, and you need that. You don't just use PHP anymore, now you use that. I'm like, what's that? Zen framework too. Okay, right. A framework. What's a framework? And so you explain what a framework is and you go, oh, okay, oh, this is absolutely terrifying. If anyone's seen Zen framework when a few of you might have actually worked in it, uh, you go, oh, if you're a learner, little bit scary. Uh, so I start learning that and going, okay, right, wrapping all these things. Okay, so I'm doing all this, I'm doing this. So now I sort of get what we're doing with frameworks and everything. So now I want to be a web developer. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no one does this anymore if you want to be a web developer. Now you need to learn this because that, that, that's out of date and we've solved problems with that. Now you need to know Symfony Framework. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, right. Uh, that's a bit scary. Like, what's, what's different? Well, it all looks different. You know, if you have a service-based architecture and, uh, and uh, there's an injecting, dependency injection. Oh, okay, right. Okay, I'll learn. 
I'll learn this before I get a job. So I started learning this and oh, okay, now actually I understand what's sort of going on a bit. And then I get a job as a web developer and I'm thinking, oh, I know what I'm doing here. This has taken a while. And then after my first job, I've been about two months and I'm like, okay, I know what you've learned here is great, but, and it's been about a year, but you know, it's, this, isn't any, this isn't any good. This is, we're switching to this now because the, the approach with Active Record and the way that we work with, with, with auto wiring and things like that in Laravel and its Rails based approach is much better. And you need to, so I'm, and I stopped and went, ah, oh, okay, right. I've been, a develop, I've been a web developer for less than a year at this point. And this, this has completely, over, just completely overwhelmed. I thought it was, you learn a bit of syntax and then you learn to program. That's what it, that's what it was supposed to be. But it, that didn't prepare me for all of that. But I've become a web developer. I am a, I am a, I was, I was a pro, I got made a programmer. Um, and you know, I got, you know, they said, okay, we're willing to take a chance on you. Okay, right. So this represents, uh, because, uh, because if you're going to be a web developer and you need an image, then you need a stock image of lots of HTML flying around everywhere because that's what we do. Uh, and the speech bubble there represents the fact that I'm now a web developer and this is my industry. I'm now in it. I'm now a web developer. And the speech bubble is, this is what I hear from my peers over the space of a year and a half. Uh, and I, have, I was about to forget because it was stock images. I just thought for a bit of a laugh, I'd put Clippy in there. Um, we're not talking about about Clippy, we're talking about PHP. Uh, so here they are. The, this, is, this, is, this is what I walked into and this is what I overheard. Well, I say overheard, these were the conversations that actually happened. This is very, very appropriate considering that, oh, by the way, I've put it all in Comic Sans because that's how much respect I have for these quotes. Um, <laughs> This is this this one. This one was this one's massive. I couldn't say this on home turf because the people that said it were actually uh, you know I obviously worked with, and there were some people from the audience from there. But a company decision after about five or six developers asked for JetBrains licenses, and the head of whatever it was at the time said, JetBrains IDEs make bad developers, and the reason they make you bad developers is because it does everything for you. So what do you learn? You know, it does it all for you. you know, you don't even have to learn anything. Your IDE doesn't make you a bad developer. You make you a bad developer. Obvious. Your, your IDE can't stop 10,000 line controllers of copy and pasted SQL code. Can't do it. It's a bad take. It's, it's, right, it's wrong. Um, and that take stopped at that company stopped all of those developers from getting the tools that they wanted to do their job which is not great let's go for another one after a talk with a colleague about this uh, that was really interesting jquery he he said he uses jquery to teach people still when they're learning out especially in boot camps and things like that because learning dom manipulation is the easiest in jquery okay the problem has been solved now uh, of what jquery was set up as for as a sort of common library but is there any, you're not, you're not a bad developer if you still use jQuery. It just means you use something that, okay, there's been new things that have been, you know, uh, think now that we've got, you know, Angular, React, and Vue. But st you might have learned jQuery, you might not want to move, you might want not to move on. You might think, well, this is quite scary with what React is doing. Does it make you a bad developer if you use a tool that's now a little bit outdated? It doesn't make you a bad developer. It means that you're not like, you know, you're cutting edge. And, but then, you know, in web development, we all, we all seem to be obsessed with being cutting edge. But it doesn't make you a bad developer. And this is sort of similar. I mean, I, I can't really say anything on that. And you're incompetent uh, if you choose Angular. Angular, the Angular meetup in Birmingham is thriving quite well, actually. Um, what they're doing in Angular, they're still rolling out the same features that React are rolling out. There's no, they're still doing the same things that Vue did. They're still introducing amazing new cool functions and things like that. It hasn't just died and it's gone to sort of dinosaur, dinosaur heaven, like tech dinosaur heaven. It's still there, it's still being developed and people like it. And it's still a very, very relevant framework. So just saying if you're not up to date with like, bang on the latest like front end, um, uh, front end library, not a great take either. This has been a bit jovial so far, so let's ramp it up a bit. Okay, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not here to stand up and point at everyone that has said this, because, hands up if you said this, I have. 
Anyone else? Don't want to admit it. No one's admitting it. Uh, <laughs> Word, I know some of you are lying. Um, WordPress developers, the, the reason, the re I'm going to take a very basic take on this, right? The reason why this is wrong is because you can write on your CV that you are a WordPress developer and you will be paid money for it. And when they pay you money, they want you to hand over code to them. So what's happened there is you've been paid money to hand over code. That's, that's what that is, isn't it? So not a great take, not a great take. And I, I think that there has to be said something for the popularity of WordPress of maybe this sort of snobby elitism is a bit too high in that remember that digital marketers and people like that love using WordPress because it, that's what it's designed. It's designed as a content you know, management system. So, okay, the plugin system and stuff, okay, there's loads of, there's vast amounts of tech debt in the project, et cetera, et cetera. We all know that, but, but it doesn't make that statement true. That's a little bit nasty, so let's make it nastier. If you choose PHP to write this service, you don't belong here. Where, where is here? I hear you ask, you didn't, you didn't ask. Uh, where is here? It was at DevOps days in, uh, it was at DevOps days and there was 400 DevOps, uh, DevOps developers and some standard and some regular developers, you know. Um, and that joke was made on stage and about 20 people laughed. But where was it? It was here! Ha 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 ha! 400 developers, standing up making jokes about PHP on a platform, an international phenomenon and business entirely written on the PHP platform. Very funny. Uh, I did complain to them and uh, they did sort of acknowledge their mistake. Um, but talk about that's biting the hand that feeds you a little bit. I know that Facebook obviously now sort of is a microservice out and everything in sort of Python and Golang and Rust and whatever. But this is not a good take to say to 400 developers because it gives the wrong impression. It was totally like, yeah, huh, let's all laugh at PHP developers in a room where you know, we have to do it all the time. It doesn't really make sense. It's a bit nasty, but then I've got, I've got, I've got the king. Here, here, here it is. I can't read it out. I've had to star it out as well. This was said to me at my company by a head of that company, who when they found out that I'd founded and started up Birmingham's PHP group, said that to me out loud in front of all of my peers, about 60 people in the office, and uh, quite a, people, a lot of people found it quite funny. I didn't really find it very funny. I found it extremely humiliating. Um, and that's when I got to the point where I thought, mm, where I'm about a year and a half, two years into my career now. Do I want to do this, really? Does it, this doesn't make me want to do it. I don't, want to, I, don't, I don't think I want to do it anymore. That's where I got to my sort of lowest point and thinking, well, the actual result of this is it helped me write this talk. Without their horrendous, horrible attitude and without phrases like that, like that, then, you know, I wouldn't have written this talk. Um, but there is an upside. Uh, the joke is the person that said that uh, now speaks at meetups. <laughs> right. <laughs> when I said I was going to write a talk, uh, and I'd moved on for a different company, and they said, it's a waste of time writing something on elitism because yeah, let's all be nice to each other, blah, blah, blah. This isn't what we do. We like debate and we like arguing. We like it. We like conflict. So that's the reason why this talk is pointless to write. It kind of fueled me to think, do you know what? This is definitely not true. And that's the reason why I'm going to write a talk and why I think this is wrong. So those are our sort of choice quotes. So as I said before, sort of didn't want to do it anymore. And I thought, what I've walked into, this is what I've walked into in a world of tech. I've chosen not to be an actor. I've chosen to walk away from my QA career that I was doing in some sort of SQL stuff. And I was happy in my bubble. And, uh, and I didn't go to meetups. And I didn't have to meet other people that are incredibly clever in what they do. Now I'm in, I'm in it. And I want to be in it. And I've walked into an absolute minefield. And it's absolutely toxic. What makes it more relevant now? Because I'm on stage and I'm still a programmer and I'm still here. Well, I mean, you saw three frameworks on there and that flummoxed me. So it begs the question, are you ready for it? Because we all do this day to day. Let's do it. 
Hit me. Yeah. Come on. More, 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 more. Look at this. I thought it was bad before. What's this? When this started being presented to me, and I'm told, OK, you need to do that, you need to do that. OK, right, don't worry about that, because it's been replaced by that now. But also, you'll get older ones that use that, but it needs the task runner, so it needs that as well. Um, also, this, where are we this month with that? Is, which, which one? Which one? Not sure. Uh, that one's taken over again, apparently. OK, so I'm like, uh, if I thought it was bad before, just being on back end, what I thought to myself on seeing that is how am I going, I couldn't keep up, I found it difficult keeping up, how am I going to keep up with that? And then I thought, well, how's like, how, how are my peers among, among, you know, among me who are also self-taught, who don't come from computer science backgrounds, how are they keeping up with this? Are they all sort of like, you know, miracle people? And it's just me looking and going, how, how can you learn a new tool a week? This is madness. But if, if my peers, some of them might struggle with this. Like, how, is, how are people that are sort of are actually taught computer science going to keep up with this as well? When I speak to, when I speak to the computer science students at you know, University of Birmingham, Aston, they're being taught this. They're being taught Java. They're being taught relational database management systems. They're being taught design patterns. There's nothing wrong with that. That's computer science degree. That's what you'd expect, right? That's, that's, what, that's what it's all about. But this, when you come out of university, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't prepare you for that. that is, you're not ready for this. No, how, like, it doesn't feel like anyone's ready for this. So now that I've upped the ante, you know, I thought that it was bad before, but now, like, you know, with, with my tox you, you throw in this toxicity that I've experienced, now where I'm at, that's, I mentioned my imposter syndrome before, so now the slightly smug or cynical man in that picture, uh, I, I hate that picture, no, I'm not a developer, and now I need to get out. I do need to get out because that, that, that there, that's, that's unobtainable. I can't learn that. I mean, I don't know how my peers are doing it. But then I found I'm not alone. And that's when things start to change. So let's look at other forms out in the wild of what it looks like. This, from the author of Symphony Framework, this is Fabian Potentier, and he wanted to do a poll on Twitter of what to do with make files because make files come again because we choke because you know we like to alternate whether we want make files or not every 10 years by the sounds of computer development. So he wanted to do a, he wanted to do a poll for Symphony 4 I think it was for Symphony 4 or when uh, when when Silex uh, Cy, Cy, was it Silex was replaced that's thanks uh, was replaced by Symphony Flex. So he wants to know whether he was going to put things into make file. So he got a response from a developer, and it was Supreme ton putain de projet Fabien et lasse les places à Tala et son Laravel. I'll let you translate. Uh, Fabien is French, obviously, so that's the reason why it's a bit broken there. But again, with the quote that I gave before, I, you know, not everyone is a fluent French speaker here, so I did translate it. I'm not going to say it, but that's the translation. I thought I had it bad. This is a bit different now, isn't it? I mean, before, I'm not a developer, right? Now, it's not me, it's the author of Symphony Framework. We're saying, he's not a developer. It's saying, get out, Fabian, rubbish. But let's laugh at how justified this is because there was a bit of a ooh in the crowd. How justified is it? Okay, let's compare the person that made the pro the, the, that comment and Fabian. We've got, have a little contest. Uh, this is a non, I don't, I don't have the person who made the, con, the, uh, the comments picture, so, uh, so but we, I don't know their name either, so can we have a name? John. John. There's John, and there's Fabian. So, what I just thought, okay, the first thing that pops into my head of like, what am I going to, what am I going to use to measure it? So I went like, so there's Fabian who's not a developer, and there's, and there's John, right? I use GitHub stars, so when I wrote this talk, this, it's undoubtedly gone up a lot. There's 20,700 stars on GitHub of people that are using that project and approve it. And then I thought, well, now I need to compare it to something. So I need like, so what do I, what do, I do for John? So here's what I went with. Uh, I went for seven, because it's an arbitrary number. It had to be something. And you can't see it because the, 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 the resolution on this is not actually that great, but it's a slightly forlorn cartoon sausage with a speech bubble coming out of its mouth. <laughs> Thanks, John. 
Uh, I don't believe you. <laughs> That's what I have to say about that. More out in the wild stuff. So that was that was you know that was an example that's starting out. Now we're going to uh, Reddit's programming humor section is an absolute dreadful hive of scum and villainy. Well, there's, a, there's, a, there's only so many times you can say, if you want to, you want to get into the humor of things like, uh, you know, things of programming humor, there's only so many times a race start at one becomes, like, becomes funny. You, you say it once, you go, oh, that's quite funny. And then seven years down the line, it's not really that, it's lost its bite a little bit. Um, and it's that rehashed and rehashed and rehashed. We're in a PHP user group. PHP is hilarious on this. Um, this... I don't know why it's less like why it's that popular, but this here, this is the mo this is the most upvoted image on programmer humor, which I find quite funny because it's quite sort of meta. Um, it's it's people that want to start out, or computer science students maybe, or just self-taught. They want to be part of a club. They want to feel like they're part of something, and they and humor is a part of that. So you think, well, it's a logical decision to come into the humor, right? But the humor is like it's outdated and dr it's not even funny. And, you know, I've, I mean, okay, my dissertation is specifically on stand-up comedy. So I, my, my sense of humour is supposed to be good, but as you're slowly finding out during the talk, it gets worse and worse. It's not actually that funny at all. So, similarly, you know, Hacker News is very similar to this. Um, uh, Hacker News, as an aggregator, is very, very useful. Uh, this is a classic Hacker News thing. Uh, it's actually Hacker News Onion, where they're trying to be like the onion. Oh, and they got... Ask Hacker News, is PHP linked to depression? And there's a, he's looking very forlorn. And then you click on the tweet and you see, the, you see what people are writing on it and it's, it's probably because of WordPress, that's why he's depressed. Or it's, you, should, you think that's bad, you should see JavaScript. Um, oh, all the hornets are sort of circling around and Ruby's the cure, which is the most pompous thing I think I've ever seen on the internet. This isn't helping anybody is it really it's just part of this sort of horrible circle jerk thing where everyone knows oh we all joke about this because we do it all the time i've walked into this and this is my livelihood right this is what i'm thinking so i mean hacker news if they want to get serious well i don't know let's get serious with them it's called ask hacker news so like oh it's an ask a question i don't i don't want to know I, that's not what, I, what i'd ask to be honest what i'd ask is I'd ask if take tech gatekeeping and burnout and imposter syndrome that I've, in, uh, that I've experienced, is that linked to depression? Because I've spoken to quite a lot of colleagues and they say that it probably is. What do you think about that hacking news? You think that's funny? <laughs> Suddenly everyone goes absolutely silent because I've killed it. Um, <laughs> this was a sort of new edition as well. And it was a really, it was a very welcome edition that Emma did my research for me. Uh, it was just one day actually before giving this talk for the first time. And she just summed up, it was almost like she read my mind, she summed up everything that I want, everything that I felt about being a developer. Look, do you write HTML? You're a developer. JavaScript, you're a developer. Python, you guessed it. Let's stop gatekeeping and make this an inclusive and safe place to learn. Why, why is that a difficult thing to say? That is, that we, why can't we strive to be more like that? That's a, that's, a fine, that's a fine comment and look at that and go, this is great, someone's got it. But you know what the problem is with the tweet, don't you? That's your problem. So you know what's coming, here are all the responses. Uh, the first one, HTML, there we go, there it is. HTML is not a programming language, haha. <laughs> Uh, the response to Emma, that Emma gave to that was, I didn't call it a programming language. Touche. It's, some of it is, some of it, some of the responses are things like, you know, I know calculus, am I a mathematician? Um, uh, HTML can't be compared to C or C++ or Java with no explanation. SQL doesn't count for some reason. Um, don't know why that is. These are okay, but this, this is, oh, can we keep the WordPress paper out? And she replied and said, no. Um, this is where it starts getting a bit more sinister because it's now saying this is an, what you're saying to try and include an inclusive environment. This is now an assault on my career. You can't call yourself a doctor. You can't call yourself a lawyer. I put in the work. It irritates me that the guy that unclogs the toilet at the hotel is the engineer. That's what you're doing by calling for inclusiveness is cheapening my job and cheapening my career. I don't see what they're afraid of. How is this going to affect you if someone says, I'm going to just be an HTML developer. Oh, and I'm going to get involved heavily in accessibility, which more people should. 
why is why why is that why is that a, an affront on your very elitist career? It's not. It's not going to change your salary. It's not going to change your life. So, really good, really good examples of 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 of, of elitism in action right there. It's important whilst I sort of blanket and say, oh, it's all bad, it's all bad, is that I can't just say everyone's bad, it's not true. It's very important because we do debate tools that shaming is against the person and not the tool. Otherwise, we start getting into what people will be go saying going over the top. Oh, we're not, Jim says we're not allowed to talk about tools anymore. We're not allowed to say we don't like WordPress. It's against the person. It's you're using WordPress, therefore you are rubbish. So a good example of this, and this is, comes from a real-world example, is Eclipse. If you say, I don't like Eclipse because it's buggy, fine. You're allowed to say that. That's, I don't even know if it is buggy. <laughs> uh, I, that, that was a real-world quote, though. Uh, that was, that was uh, Cindy, your engineer, who said, don't like it. It's got too many bugs. All right, that's fine. Well, how, how, can I, how can I moan at you for saying that? You're allowed to say that. This is another real-world quote, and it's in Comic Sans, because that's what I think of it. What's this? Were you, 14? That's tool shaming. That's elitism. That isn't. You're allowed to do that. That's fine. Now, we get onto what problems it causes because this is kind of key of why I talk about this and why I, why I decided that a talk would be good because there are people in here that will be senior engineers. There are people here that will be CTOs. Let's look at problems that it causes. First of all, apprentices in your business when you take them on. They don't know this industry. They come into it and you're giving them the tools to achieve what they want. If you give them all of this elitism and all this shaming, they've got, they've got two options, right? They're going to go one of two ways. Either they're going to become like you and they'll become very strangely bitter for sort of no reason other than you don't, other than you don't like a set of tooling. Or they'll just get scared and then they'll go somewhere else. Or they might just leave tech and, you know, I suppose if they leave tech, maybe you don't care. Um, maybe you don't, not, instead of like, well, I'm not going to lose into a competitor, am I? Because they're going to leave tech. That's not what we should be doing. We should be encouraging people into this industry. Similarly, on the other side, it's like, if you've got apprentices coming in, then you're pushing your domain knowledge out for people that have been there for longer or have worked with tooling that is a lot older than you are or how long you've been working in the industry. That's not a clever strategy if you say, jQuery is a good example of this. Uh, we don't use jQuery anymore. What are you like? What are you, a dinosaur? It's rubbish. Um, if you don't learn React uh, now, then uh, we're going to treat you like a second-class citizen. You're an idiot. Then they'll go, all right, and they'll leave. What happens if they've been there 15 years and all of their knowledge, all of that tech knowledge, which we all know is impossible to get out of most people that have had it for years and years, if they just go, oh, well, congratulations, you've just shot yourself in the foot for no reason. For that reason, I basically say this sort of is very linked. This is very much interlinked. If you limit your talent to frameworks or you move on to a new framework, you're limiting your talent. You're saying you can't, uh, we're not, we're not going to hire that person because we're a symphony shop and we only hire Laravel developers. What are you doing that for? It sounds ridiculous. I've seen it in action, which is just, which doesn't make any sense. It's just and it's a terrible business model. I mean, you can't go through. If you're in like, you know, when I was giving this talk, I didn't give this an example in PHP London because London's the sort of the ever-growing machine. You'll always find someone new, right? If you're in any other city, you've been Birmingham and Glasgow and Bristol, etc. How, how many mid to senior level Laravel developers can you get to before you're doing the agency circuit and just hiring people around in a circle? Limiting it is a really bad way of not bringing in new talent. And reputation, <laughs> because I mentioned London is like the, is the one where it doesn't work anywhere else. We like gossiping, don't we? <laughs> we like talking. We like talking to each other. Did you hear about what happened at this agency last week? Blah, 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 blah. Throw, throwing that elitism into there, into the mix of like, do you know what they were like? They said this about this. And now they're, now they're losing staff because we talk, we gossip, we like doing it. It's a closed industry, especially if you talk about people that are here that are in the sort of meetup circuit. We know each other's businesses and what we've worked in. So this is dangerous because it will come back to haunt you. And also I've seen that happen where a company's reputation has basically fallen to pieces because they carried on with it and then no one wanted to work for them. It's also, that was from a local perspective of I'm saying, you know, we all like to talk and we like to gossip. But let's look at the bigger picture. It stops, 
it stops collaborative thinking because you're, you're encouraging silos. So it won't, things like this, where we are borrowing off each other of how spring, you know, originally was, uh, how spring is created and symphony borrows a lot of the, like, a lot of the techniques and et cetera. And then symphony created, uh, symphony created twig off the back of uh, Django's original ginger templating engine. It used the syntax of it. And then symphony went to symphony two and three. And then Django started borrowing techniques back off it. We're exchanging ideas. We're exchanging patterns. This is good. This is collaborative thinking. You start doing more and more of this silo stuff, it will create less people willing to work like this. Similarly, you know, from a massive perspective, how containers and cubes and Docker have created collaborative thinking where we've got to this weird state, weird sort of alternate universe where suddenly it's Facebook of the baddies and Microsoft has suddenly gone on open source and now they're heavily invested in Docker and now they've got a Unix system on top of the, you know, the bash for Windows. This is collaborative thinking though. These are people that are not thinking like my intro, and in my intro I said, oh, well, I use a Windows system, therefore if you don't use that, then you're rubbish. This is the opposite of what's happened now, because we've been thinking outside the box. It doesn't define you at all. What defines you is what you build with it. So if you put more silos down, it stops this. This isn't a good thing. I call it, I touched upon this with, sort of, with, with apprentices, but this is what I like to call tool shaming as a weapon. I do see it as a weapon, and it's I've seen this in action and it's pretty vile. I mean, we've already established that tool shaming is really the undisputed champion of, if you go to gatekeeping Reddit, about half of them is all tech and the rest is all like manga communities and things like that. Uh, but champion of gatekeeping, which is such a horrendous kind of uh, attitude to have. It's not very, it's not thinking outside the box. But I call this thing the shaming cycle, which is which my, the, you know, my weapon, my tool shaming weapon. So. Here's, 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 uh, here's someone, uh, I'm going to have to shout names again. We've had, what do we have? Mary. Ma uh, Mary. Mar Mary's now a CTO. They've, she's created her own business, uh, or it's with a CTO or whatever, uh, with a CEO or whatever. Right, so in charge, of, in charge of hiring, in charge of creating the tech for their, for their business, right? So the thing is, is that Mary's been on Programmer Humor quite a lot. And also, she's been reading lots and lots of blog articles about why React is terrible. And also, and I could just keep on going on about, you don't do this, you don't do this, you don't do this, right? So it's no longer, that's, it's not really Mary anymore. So, I mean, thank you for the name suggestion, but now it's Wario. So uh, that's, and that's, that's, that's who's heading up this operation, right? This is where we're starting from. Tool shaming and elitism doesn't stop you from expanding your business and it doesn't stop you from making money. So you will still expand. Here you go, you've hired. Now I've got another person, another name. Esme, oh, well, left field. Uh, thank you for being the only person who's shouting out names. It's not, it's not that scary, is it? Uh, but, 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 but this is happening, isn't it? So that's someone that's young, that's coming into the industry. I'd say young, not in age, in like, you know, in experience, right? So, but it's no longer Esme now because she's learned from the best, right? She's learned from, from, from Wario. So now, it's not Esme, mm, close, no, it's, no, it's Katie Hopkins. <laughs> Now you're making Hopkins, and this is a problem. Uh, because once you assemble teams, right, it goes on, doesn't it? There's another person. I'm not, do, I, do, I even, do I even ask for a name? I'm not going to ask for a name. I'm going to say, what have you created third time round? Any, any ideas? I, Trump, I think now I'd probably put Trump on it. Huh? Boris Johnson. Uh, same thing. It's Piers. There's Piers. <laughs> this is this. This is what your company looks like with all of this elitism. This isn't good. Do, I, do we want this? Is this the world that we want? Because the forthcoming problem that I'm about to demonstrate is it's going to get worse, isn't it? Because if you're in an agency or something like that, or even if you've got a product, you're going to lose staff because they're going to go somewhere else. They've left. Okay, so you've left. So, so Katie and Piers have gone. Except they haven't gone, have they? They haven't left tech. They've gone somewhere else. So now, this cycle results in this. This is the world of tech that we've created. Because you've let them loose into the wild and they go to other places and they think that that's the right way to be. Uh, so I had to expand it. I couldn't just have Piers and I couldn't just have Katie. So I threw in uh, Alex Jones from Infowars. Uh, if you haven't uh, seen anything that he does, watch it. It's hilarious. This... This is, not, this is not what we should be aspiring for, really. 
And this is from first-hand experience. I'm not making this up. This is what I have seen. I've seen whole companies and other agencies full of absolute bile and hatred and trying to lock down employees. This isn't good. We need, we need, we need to do better than this. And this is why it's important that we don't do this. Because we're talking as a meetup of PHP of web developers and or DevOps or front end, et cetera, et cetera. We're about to expand beyond this because tech is taking over everything. We're not web developers. Originally, we were webmasters. We're not webmasters anymore. We're, we're, de we're proper developers, you know, that we've taken over the, sort of the Java mantles of desktop applications, et cetera, et cetera. But we're not just developers anymore. We're digital marketers. We're SEO experts. Data is the new oil. Ha, I said it. Um, but it, but it, you know, is that, that, that oft, uh, oft used quote far too often is true. E-commerce is taking over the high street. It's making the high street something that is obsolete. We are now from a range of thing, you know, things like beyond DevOps, we're into test ops, we're in automated testing. We're beyond being developers. We are swallowing up other industries. If we continue with this, the land of, of Alex Jones and Piers Morgan, that's going to start permeating into other industries as the norm. And I don't think that that is something that we should be aiming for. So we need to do something about it. As much as I, could just, I could just moan at you for ages and say, this is what's wrong. But I think this is what I propose that we do about it. First of all, developer relations on culture. Developer relations is, confuses most developers in general because it's fairly new in its evolution of what it is. But to explain it very briefly, it's people like me that are on stage uh, some people do this completely full time where they speak for a living. Some people are just uh, senior developers or well, just any developers that talk on stage. Developer relations tend to do as a bonus job on top of what they do because they have a passion for culture, which I sadly do, which is a curse or a blessing, depending on whether you hate or like my talk. Um, take it upon themselves to teach a try and shape our culture for us because sometimes we need guidance. And I found that tech elitism and gatekeeping is something where I think we needed guidance. So we can, we can talk on it and say, and I can do an event like this now where I say, this is what I think. It's a bit of an aside, really. This is the big one. It's not me. It's you. You make the decisions and you shape the future. And this is massive in that small quips, small quips have a big impact. And they really do, especially on junior members or people that are new that are coming into your business. It doesn't matter if you're a junior developer. It doesn't matter if you've just been made and manager for the first time. It doesn't matter if you're a CTO. It doesn't matter what level you are. Your quips, if you start throwing out sound bites, because people like sound bites, it's why I've, created, uh, I've included Domino, because it just keeps on going. But you can change that. All you need to do is think about, think about small, small quips have big impact, which brings me on to the theory of, 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 of uh, nudge theory which comes from Daniel Kahneman. Um, this book is actually, uh, so Daniel Kahneman is a, is a psych, um, psychologist who, uh, who created nudge theory. Um, inside the nudge unit is quite famous because it was used by .gov.uk and it was used by uh, some of uh, Cam the Cameron era teams on, people have lost their way to be able to think sometimes because they just keep on repeating things. If you start the nudge, if you, if you make the first step for them, it will encourage them to take the right path. That's where small quips, if you just start people out by doing regular small quips of, okay, well, actually, I, th I don't think you should say that, or we can, you can use that, it's a bit old, it just give a sensible opinion. This creates this domino theory. This is where, nudge units come, where the nudge unit comes in. Uh, if you want to know more about it, there's, uh, there's the gov.uk link to it. It was called the Behavioural Insights Team. Uh, they're most famous, well, they've had loads and loads of successes, but one of them is the pensions, where it's opt-in pension by default, and you have to opt out. There was no reason for that not to be the case. Why don't we just make it so that you already have a pension, and if you don't want that money removed, then you have to take action as opposed to the other way around. This is where nudge unit comes into, comes into things like elitism. We can, we can make small, small moves to stop it. That was all very sort of, you know, that's my serious take on it, but now I just want to laugh at them because I can. Um, because some of it is hilarious. Everything, for instance, is a battle, right? Everything's a fight, isn't it? Because we love, you know, oh, you don't do this and you don't do that. And oh, I don't, you're like, okay, right. So everything is something versus something. So what do we think it's going to be? Anyone? Battles. I think it's versus reality. 
And so I should have probably put things in like that. It's it's not so it's not fr it's not frameworks. It's high level, more more famous. Could be, could be back end front end. <laughs> and that's the point where I actually have to show you the answer. Uh, so um, it'd probably be a bit more obvious, but yeah, tabs versus spaces. <laughs> Yo, man, like, you heard this thing, like, on Silicon Valley on the TV show, like, and they got, like, tabs, and they talk about tabs and spaces, and, like, have you seen the episode? You know, I spoke to a developer friend of mine, and it's real, man. They really like doing it. They're, like, arguing about tabs versus spaces, and you edit to it. Oh, yeah. that's, that's a real conversation as well, I've heard. Tabs versus space, really? Uh, I've, I've heard, in my company, th three hours solid whilst sort of looking at the screen. Ha this, and this has happened. And I thought, oh, that's quite interesting. Three hours. How much, how much does that cost? So I did the maths. Here it is. <laughs> three hours, three devs at 40K. 236 working days for my company, seven hours a day. So we've got 40,000 divided by 236. It's 169.49. 169.49 divided by seven. 24.21. So 24.21 times by three, which is the amount of devs. That's 72 pounds uh, 63. £72.63 times three because it's three hours and that's £217.89 on an argument that will never ever be resolved because it's ongoing all the time. What a waste of money. <laughs> but nevertheless, hilarious. That's one fight, let's have another fight. Uh, yeah, Emacs versus Vim. You can go onto Editor Wars on Wikipedia and see a massive article called Editor Wars where they're all fighting amongst each other. It's like, well, Vim does this, blah, 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 and then page memory, and you can do this. And I've got, I'll admit it, I put all of the effort into the tabs versus spaces thing. I mean, I just, I just, I just gave up by this point. Um, who cares? This was another argument that went on for ages. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? I'll t I'll tell you who cares. This man cares. Linus cares because he loves it. By his own admission, Linus Tovels, the author of Linux, will say, well, I love it. I love arguing about, little, about, you know, about the small things and then it blah, blah, blah. He's a tech elitist. The only reason I call out Linus is because he loves it. He loves being a nightmare. He called Git on purpose because it's offensive. That's Linus. Linus cares about this. Uh, that's actually, if you type in Linus Torvalds, that's the second image that comes up on Google. He cares. Do you know who doesn't care? And you might be able to guess the answer. Sort of. <laughs> this is how I illustrate my point. Because it is me, this is how I illustrate my point. That there is from an app that I was working on about three years ago. And it, it had like a traffic light system where you uploaded a... Uh, you uploaded an absolutely massive sheet and then it passed loads of stuff and it did absolutely bucket loads of stuff. When you uploaded it, it was processing when it went orange and then it, when it was green, it was like, hey, you've loaded it. And it had A and UA and I can't even remember what that stood for. No idea, I can't remember. When it's unprocessed, it has UA in the circle. And the client said, sorry to be picky, but the UA doesn't fit in the circle, please can you make the circle bigger? Can you see the circle? There's the circle. There's the UA, there's the circle. So, that's what I had to deal with. I don't have time to talk about Emacs versus Vim, and I don't have time to talk about tabs versus spaces. The reason I don't have time, because as developers, we have to deal with this. <laughs> this is nonsense. Our clients are all mad. How can we have time to spend three hours debating something that can't be fixed when you can't, when, when the circle and the UA, you can't see it because the projector is too small. But I've taken care of that, it's fine. There's, there it is, there it is blown up. The UA doesn't fit in the circle. The UA does fit in the circle. That's why I don't have time for tech elitism and I don't have time for gatekeeping because I'm too busy. Oh, oh I forgot I actually added this of like, you know, uh, uh, that's a new one that I completely flummoxed me, but yeah, I decided to actually like outline the circle of where I thought the boundary was. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop uh, stop shouting and bullying you all. Um, for, I'm afraid, like I did say, I've got a stand-up comedy uh, dissertation and a theatre degree, which is why I'm getting animated. Um, so let's conclude. So you can actually listen to Paul, who is actually a professional, talk about important things. Um, I'm not saying to conclude that you, that you shouldn't debate tools. Do debate tools because we do. We use different things. Say so I don't think we should use that. We shouldn't use that because it's not because of these reasons. It's fine. You're allowed to say that. It's just when you bring people into the mix. Uh, I, I love the fact that I managed to get lemon grab into my, into my talk. Um, I'm not going to explain that. Ask me in the pub later. Nudge when judgment appears. It's big. You'd think it's not, but it is. If someone says, uh, I can't believe that, you're, that as a developer, you've, got, that, that you've had three years experience and you decided to use WordPress. Who cares? You still used something, right? We all had to start with something. Some people still do, and they make lots of money out of it. It's, it's a paid job. Nudge when it appears, because it will have effect, and it will have a domino theory effect. More importantly as well is be mindful, because you talk about all these debates and people going, I don't know. not everyone likes that when you do do that. I don't. I don't like conflict. I don't like people... I don't like two programmers arguing in a room saying blah, 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 and I've seen it get to heated levels where it's almost shouting about something like that. Not everyone wants to hear that. We're lots of lots of different people. I think we should use this as a pillar of change with nudge theory to change our attitude to try and stop this elitism because I think it's quite bad. I think we should use these things as a pillar of a change. Um, and lastly, one of, the, one of the main arguments is, well, if people continue to use jQuery, people are using old tools that are rubbish, therefore it brings us all down. No, it doesn't. I call it the capitalism of tech. If it's rubbish, people will stop using it eventually. That's how we work. Does anyone know what the middle is? Cold fusion. Point of that. Um, <laughs> It's, the reason why I do that with shaming is because it was, it's died now. It served a purpose, but, it, 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 well, they tried to introduce... A new, it's, it's like Google Plus of introducing something onto something else to solve a problem that's already been solved. It died. It died because no one wanted it. Let it die. iTunes. iTunes. If you want your company and your product to succeed, don't force you 2 onto people. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've been Jim Zakond. I've probably uh, alienated my whole audience, as I do every single time. Um, uh, normally, a lot of people do QAs at the end of their sessions. Uh, we did try a few of those. Uh, I, uh, I would like to say I'm not doing a QA because uh, it, you could be here all night. <laughs> but if you do have thoughts and you like what I say or you don't like what I say or you want to discuss what I've talked about, then I'll come to the pub with everyone. Come and, come and chat to me and uh, we'll keep that open because I can change bits of this uh, and also stop bullying my audience. Um, so thank you very much.